Do you think enough is being done to try to keep the civilians safe? And is there really a way to effectively do that in the midst of a war? Well, I, I mean, just graphically speaking, you, know, you can just self-evident that, that that's not the case. They are not doing everything they can to take care of the civilian population uh, because they continue to push them into areas that were allegedly safe, and now they're into pushing them into new areas. There, there is uh, right now they, the the uh, UN officials uh, expect that the town of Rafah, which is down the border between Gaza and Egypt, which is normally about 280,000, will probably be pushing one million within two to three days as people move out of uh, Khan Yunus down into that area as, as directed by Israel. But the problem is that there's not an infrastructure for the people down there. And I'm talking stuff like, like food, water, sanitation, which by the way is a much bigger issue than many people realize because that's where lots of diseases come from when there's nowhere to just, you know, frankly go to the bathroom and get rid of all that stuff. And a lot of the water's been cut off anyway. So you, you see that it's gonna become even more dire and it's possible that people could start dying and Palestinians more from disease and other issues than just the, even the bombs. And that's a big problem and an issue for the U.S. government. Absolutely. The, the humanitarian portion of this is such a big chunk. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel, I'd like to talk about the U.S. response um, you know, to the attacks. We heard from Jake Sullivan just yesterday acknowledging uh, that the administration believes that, that they were backed by Iran. Does the U.S. need to be more proactive versus reactive? Well, you know, what we really got to stop here is a second and look at this from the 30,000 foot level. What is America's interest? Not not let's just, you know, knee jerk react to whatever is happening on the ground here. But what is our interest? And that is not to expand this war, not to get drawn into a war, especially with with Iran. And, and all of these things keep pushing in that direction. And if we, quote, take stronger action against Iran for, for like what the Houthi rebels are doing in the, in the Red Sea, for what's going on in Syria and in Iraq with our own troops, we stand the chance of actually accelerating this potential to expand the war, not to shrink it. What we should be doing is doing everything to limit the war to where it's at. And that means in part to get our troops out of unnecessary harm's way into more defensible positions where we still have the full ability to project power, but not get drawn into a situation where we, quote, have to respond and attack Iran directly because that's just not in our interest. Yeah, I, I certainly see what you're saying there. Uh, let's talk about something that, that we're starting to see more airplay on, these growing calls for key international organizations to publicly acknowledge these reports of gender-based and really sexual violence. Why does there seem to be this delay uh, in acknowledging uh, that, that that is happening, that that has happened? Uh, I, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not familiar with that aspect of what's going on, and I, I guess I really couldn't say anything on mm -hmm. that. I'm sorry. All right. Um, well, do you think Israel and Hamas will resume negotiations? I know Robert talked about that, talked about trying to bring these officials to the table, back to the table. Do you think that will happen and kind of talk about what is likely happening behind the scenes, if anything? I think that we can always assume that things are happening behind the scenes in terms of talking and the two sides are saying things, but what they're saying publicly, and this is both sides, they say that no, there's not going to be any more negotiations, no more talks. Uh, Hamas is claiming that they, they say that the Israeli side reneged on some things at the end that could have extended it, and now they say they're not willing to talk about hostage release, and of course Israel's saying the same thing, and, and probably the truth is somewhere in the middle. Neither one of them are going to be happy, but the downside is that now then the, the family members of those hostages who were still held are, are certainly going to be in even more anguish and, and the risk to, to losing them, I'm afraid, is going to go up. And we know lawmakers are discussing this uh, right now, but how long do you think the U.S. realistically can continue to provide aid to Israel and Ukraine? Well, look, that's, that problem is getting even more complicated because there's the report out from Defense One earlier this morning that there are some reports that U.S. JDAM weapons that we have provided Israel have been used uh, in attacks on civilian infrastructure that had no relation with any kind of military advance. And it's just a civilian building where many people were killed and the houses were destroyed. And if that turns out to be true, then that could potentially violate the Leahy law that we have where we do not allow our weapons to be used in any kind of war crimes. And of course, it's very chaotic and very uncertain about these things. And we don't know the truth right now, but we have to press hard to find out what the truth is because we cannot risk saying we're going to violate our own law and just continue to provide these supplies without any strings and then later find out it was true because then that undercuts our moral authority 
throughout the world, and we can't hold anyone else responsible for it. It's a bigger deal than it appears. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.